Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY25 Results Conference Call of Saigama India Limited hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal our operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pulkit Chawla from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Neha. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Q1 FY25 earnings call for Sarikama. From the management, we have with us today Mr. Vikram Mehra, Managing Director. Mr. Pankaj Chaturvedi, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Saket Sa, Group Head Investor Relations at ESC Reporting, and Mr. Pankaj Kedia, Vice President Investor Relations. Without any further delay, I shall now hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. Over to you, Vikram. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. This quarter saw operating revenue of 205 crore and PBT of 51 crore. Our revenue is a 26% increase over the last year and is in sync with a guidance of 30% revenue increase in financial year 25. Our EBITDA increased by 9% and is currently at 33% of the revenue, which again is in sync with the guidance that we have been giving for our adjusted EBITDA. As always, I will request you to evaluate us on a rolling 12-month basis and not on quarterly basis. I said this when we had a great quarter four last year, I'm saying the same thing when we have in this quarter. On a full year basis, we are confident that we will end up meeting all our guidances that we have given to the market. Let me start as always with the first vertical music. If we look at the numbers right now, there seems to be an apparent drop in the music segment revenue. I just need to clarify that actually there is no drop. What you see is uh, because on account of Carva numbers also being there, I can give you comfort that the music revenue, which is combination of music plus artist management, is on track to achieve a guidance of 25 to 26% growth in the financial year 25. We don't see any problem there. This quarter saw release of our chartbuster song, Toba Toba, from the movie Bad News. This song has topped every possible chart in the country, from Spotify, Instagram, radio, YouTube, uh, you name it, and we're there. It's Spotify's number one song in India since 9th of July. In fact, it's on YouTube music videos. It's global number one music video on YouTube since last 28 days. Today is the 29th day. As I talk to you, number two and the number three songs also on the YouTube global list actually belong to us. The other songs of Bad News, Janam and Mere Mehboob, are also part of Spotify's top 50 charts for weeks now. We also saw the release of Prabha Samita Bachchan and Deepika Padukonj movie Kalki 2898 AD. Just like the movie, the music is done very well and has topped the mu Telugu music charts. Other big album this quarter was movie Mandakini, whose song Vate Pan topped the charts in Malayalam language. In non-film category, company released songs like Morni by Raftar, who is a very, very big rapper. Kala Chashma Laga Lije by Neil Kamal in Bhojpuri. Piyu Manu Maru by Kajal Mehri in Gujarati. And the devotional song Suno Krishna Pyare by Swati Mishra. And these are some of the names that I have taken. Overall, we released 330 plus original and, and uh, premium recreation songs across multiple languages, which includes Hindi, Bhojpuri, Gujarati, Punjabi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Marathi, and Bengali. Our lineup for the next 12 months is all in place, where we have the music of some of the biggest films of the year. We have just released in the month of July two songs from the next movie called Istri 2. Both of them songs are doing extremely well. One of them is Global Music Video number two, and the third, second song is Global Music Video number three on YouTube Music Video Charts. The, that means Global number one, number two, number three all belong to Sarigama today. The, some of the movies which are going to get released in the next few months are Dharma Productions Jigra, which stars Alia Bhatt, Medoxon Skyforce, 
Tamil fantasy film Kangova, where uh, Tamil superstar Surya is acting. Mamuti's Bazooka in Malayalam. Kannada superstar Sudeep Kicha's film. As shared with you in May, this will be the year where we start the journey of future proofing our company by investing in newer content. It will also be the year to start the process of moving Sarigama from being the number two label to the number one label of the country. This means this is a three year period right now where we, we will buy big in terms of content, but we will always buy smart so that we have one of the best ROIs in the market. This quarter, the charge off on account of new content has gone up by 48% year on year. We are currently in a transitional state where our new content expenses are going up in a step function manner, resulting in the incremental revenue just about matching the content charge off. Over a period of next 18 months, this will stabilize and the content investment going up will start going up linearly after that and not in a step function. And the additional revenue that we will be generating on account of the content we will be taking over these two years and the new content that we will pick up will far exceed then the charge off that will start coming in um, because the content investment will go up in a linear fashion and then, which means the profits will also start rising up in a steep fashion. With all this content and new, com in, um, all this investment in new content, we maintain our guidance of a five year payback period. That means whatever you spend today across all languages, at maximum five years, you will get our money back and then we have anything between 55 to 75 years to make money from that content. This quarter was the last one with the base effect of free streaming moving to pay. We had two of our partner platforms who had contributed revenues uh, on the free side in Q1 FI24, which from Q2 onwards completely moved behind the paywall. But this impact gets over from Q2 onwards, we will not have this impact any longer um, on our books. On YouTube revenue front, quarter one, saw some pressure on account of most advertising actually uh, being moving to, uh, coming from the political advertising or it was IPL advertising. Um, June onwards, we started seeing very, very stable growth. As we go forward in the year right now, we see the numbers looking good. Overall, we aim for the music vertical, which includes licensing as well as artist management to grow its revenue by a minimum 26% during the year. Artist management, the new vertical that we have under music, where artists are made popular through our um, IP releases, which may be music or short format films or longer format films. And then we monetize these artists by booking them for live events, weddings, and brand endorsements, and Saramek Gama gets a share of their monies. During the quarter, 30 plus new influencers and music artists were added, making our overall portfolio upwards of 150. These artists between them have over 100 million followers and subscribers on Instagram and YouTube. As the investment in newer content goes up, these artists are going to become bigger and bigger. The uh, most pessimistic um, estimates also on digital advertising growth are giving a number of around 15%. A large amount of this money is going to flow down to um, on, on content which is riding on the digital platforms. And with the might that we people have between our own content and the content which is created by the artists whom we are managing, we believe we will have a very strong position to grab a lion's share of this advertising budget. Uh, both on the music side and more importantly through Pocket Aces Clout, uh, we believe right now we will be having a clear number one position here. Two of the artists on the music side released their songs. It was Arjun Tanwar's uh, song Banjare that was launched and Mahi released his second song Jadugari. Net Net with a stated goal of acquiring 25 to 30% of all new music released in India, the licensing vertical should double its revenue something between three and a half years, which is 25 to 26% growth year on year. 
and this entire investment is going to be funded through our internal accruals or the QIP money which is lying with us. No additional investments are needed. No, no additional um, uh, fundraise is needed. Let me now shift to the video vertical where we make films under the brand name Udly. We make digital series under brand name Dice which belongs to Pocket Aces. Short format content under filter copy, nutshell, etc. And TV serials for Sun TV. The explosion in smartphone ownership and cheap data are the biggest driver of this vertical. We are still in very early stages of building this business. We believe over the next five years we should be able to grow this business at 25% CAGR. Please remember every time we look at video, video has to make money on its own and we are all very clear about it. But we should also keep in mind the amazing amount of impact it has on the music business. It allows us, the music that, it allows us firstly content guarantee. Since most of our competitors also have a video arm, we never want to be caught in a position where it becomes difficult for us to acquire content from the market. Secondly, the content that is, or the music which is put in a Udly film ends up giving us a much better ROI than something that we are acquiring from the outside. Obviously, because we have complete con uh, control on the what music and what singers are involved in that music. This quarter saw release of two of our Punjabi films, uh, Gippy Grewal, Shinda Shinda, No Papa, and Neem Sahas Kutni Part 2. Quarter 1 also saw the release of uh, Bade Sheher Choti Family, a branded web series with Maruti as the principal sponsor, which was released in filter copy. Agra Affairs, a dice creation, was delivered to Amazon Mini TV. And Gobble had a web series called Carpool Biryani, which was, um, had the backing of the sponsor Thumbs Up. In the last few quarters with various uh, consolidations that are going on in the media sector, um, there is a little bit of uncertainty on the digital platforms and TV channels. We believe all these things should sort themselves out over the period of the next 12 months. And the market is once again going to have a lot of hunger for more and more of video content, both on the film side as well as on the short and long format video content. On the live event side, we started um, the Dil Luminati Tour of Diljit Dosan in Vancouver with a record-breaking turnout of over 50,000 fans. Overall, 11 concerts were held in Canada and USA. Multiple shows are planned in India and UAE in the coming quarters. We also launched That's of Viraj with friends, a live comedy show with a cloud-exclusive artist called Viraj Gilani. These are great examples of synergy is being drawn between various verticals of Saregama so that um, the overall result is much greater than the sum of individual parts. Two of the shows were held in Mumbai and now we are planning the shows internationally also. As shared in the past, even business is a very high revenue, low margin but a high IRR business. So in quarters where there are a lot of concerts, it may make our EBITDA margin look a little low. But the fact is very little capital gets locked in events business and that also for a very short duration, which results in that a very high IRR, high IRR for the business even though the margins are less. A typical scene is that if a concert is happening, actual money is getting locked for anything not more than 15 to 30 days. And more often than not, our ticketing partner ends up giving us an advance which takes care of the investment that we have to make initially. As far as Carbine is concerned, we have uh, rolled out a new retail strategy whereby we will be selling this product only from e-commerce and modern trade stores. This entire thing is um, getting rolled out in various parts of the, con uh, of the country. Over the next few quarters, we will start getting out of the individual stores. While a top line, while the, um, the number of units sold of Karma and hence the resultant top line will shrink on account of we getting out of the retail stores, we believe our profitability margins are going to improve through better control on the cost structures um, which were directly attributed to the physical distribution. As promised earlier, from this quarter onwards, we have started uh, sharing the Karva revenue numbers separately. 
This quarter carbon revenue was 24.7 crore, which is a significant drop over what quarter one financially at 24 saw. If I look, talk a little bit long term, over the next three years, we will be investing over 1,000 crore in new music content. This will not only contribute to immediate growth, but also put the company on a long term growth path. And this is something I, I want to reiterate. I said it many times. We always had the option to be happy being a music only, catalog only company and drive very high margins. And yes, the margins can be very, very high if we continue only being that. We believe that's not going to prepare the company for future. We are making these high margins because we made the investments 30 years ago on the catalog content. Similarly, we have to make investments today so that 50 years on the line also, the company remains relevant and remains as one of the most successful entertainment companies you have ever seen in India. Also, we don't want to be dependent ever only on one vertical and in today's digital environment, all verticals are feeding off each other, even feeds of music, music feeds of films. Films are used right now to promote artists and the same artists are then going out there and performing in events. So uh, for us, there's a lot of synergy we believe we can drive off each other. Uh, and you will start seeing the impact of this over the next two, two to three years. At the consolidated company level, we expect revenue, excluding Carva, to grow at a CAGR um, of 30% over the next three years and PBT to double over the next three to four years. On the EBITDA side, we maintain our adjusted EBITDA guidance of 32 to 33 percent. With the strength of what we, the IP that we people own, a long-term strategic thinking, adequacy of capital on our balance sheet, and a fast-growing digital footprint. Today, uh, just for your information, we people have a direct or indirect controlling 262 million follower internet footprint between various channels of Sarigama pocket aces and the artists that we people manage. Strength of all this will ensure that we will be successful in our aim to become one of the biggest and one of the most profitable IP company from India. Thank you and we'll be happy to take questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of K. Vish Parikh from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, so at the start of the call, we alluded that the music business needs to be looked at on a 12-month basis. Um, even then, music revenues are up only 7%. Um, further, margins too have been volatile. So what explains this, sir? What led to the sharp fall in margins, uh, music margins this quarter? Um, and secondly, any color on the performance of pocket aces? Um, numbers suggest that pocket is now, is now uh, close to break even. So is that the right understanding? Uh, so let me answer pocket aces first. Uh, end of the year, you will find pocket aces at a break even level. Uh, I, we are not there yet, but we will be there before the end of the year. Uh, regarding on the first one, uh, when you're please looking at a music revenue, you have to com um, combine music and artist management. They're all music here. On a, a combined basis right now, basis, we people have been growing at over 23% year on year. And we will, this year, in fact, our guidance is that we will grow at 26%. You had a question on the profitability. Please remember, at the moment, we start investing more and more on the newer content, as stated earlier. The uh, increase in revenue in the initial year will just about match the charge off that we will end up taking on the content. Give it another 18 months, uh, post which the impact of the um, uh, revenue will be far higher than the charge-off that we'll be taking. And you will be seeing profitability also start moving in the, at the same level as which revenue will be going up. Right, right. Thanks for that, sir. 
um, just as a follow-up on the artist management vertical, um, revenues from the same have started flowing in only 3Q F24 onwards. Uh, no, is that right? They have started reporting them separately now. They were earlier part of the music vertical. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yosh from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I've just got one basic data queuing question. Uh, how much revenue comes from um, YouTube and Instagram for Saragama across all your segments? I can't give you specific platform level information. It's confidential in nature. Okay, okay, but do you, just directionally, would it be like, you know, a majority of your revenue or or are there other streaming platforms uh, that also contribute or is it more diversified? That's what I'm trying to understand. We don't have dependence on any one platform or one partner to that extent. Um, YouTube definitely is a large enough player right now, but so is our, the streaming platforms like Spotify. Uh, so are short format con platforms like Instagram and so are uh, the big television channels, networks, who end up taking a license from our side. So are the societies from whom we end up getting a, a money typically in quarter four of ours. So we are we we have very consciously worked uh, in a fashion right now that there is not over dependence on any one player. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, my question is on the uh, event side uh, performance, if you can uh, shed some light, and also impact on revenue coming from the uh, Dilji Doshan concert that was held in US and Canada in Q1. And third, sir, just um, wanted your uh, view on the influencer side, like uh, we are focusing uh, to advertising uh, through influencers. So like a uh, lot of focus uh, RPSG group to uh, go with the influencers. So this will going to be our strategy uh, for uh, uh, most of the group company that we are doing. Thank uh, you. Let me see, I am uh, in a position only to comment on Sari Gama. Uh, the, when we look at influencer, we very strongly believe that in the days to come, more and more younger people prefer following their local influencers that they look up to rather than only the top cricketers or the top uh, uh, Bollywood actors. People um, go by the brand recommendation made by somebody they can relate to rather than only a movie idol. Uh, and brands are recognizing this. So more and more brands now want to work with the influencer. We understand that reality. Hence, we want to build that vertical up. The key challenge is anybody can tomorrow start representing influencers. Why we are unique? Because we are the only influencer management company which also is in the business of creating content. Hence, the influencer who signs with us, we can make the influencer that much bigger by giving them chances to appear in our music videos or give them chances to appear in the video content that we are creating for a filter copy or a gobble or a nutshell or a udli fill. So that's the overall strategy on the influencer. Once the influencer becomes big, whatever money influencer makes through brand endorsements, through live con um, performances at weddings or, um, or any other mode right now, we end up getting a percentage share of that revenue. This is as far as the influencer part you asked. On the event side, remember the nature of the business is that uh, you invest some money for a very short span of time concerts typically don't require long gestation periods uh, if you if a concert is happening right now in the month of october you uh, typically we end up putting our money right now only in the month of august in the month of september we end up getting advances from our partners um, who may be doing the ticketing for that show. So the money is locked for a pretty li limited time. October, the deal gets over, uh, money is back, brand money is also in. So the money can, the same money can be circulated six at times, eight times during the year. Hence, on the uh, margin side, it will always be single digit margin, um, mid single digit margin um, kind of numbers. But on the IRR side, it becomes triple digit IRRs. Uh, if the money is deployed properly. Hope I've answered all your questions.
Uh, yes, sir. So just one more thing. As uh, we are now focusing more of uh, launching younger generation singers, so what your comment on that side? Or like because it will be lesser in cost, so it will obviously going to help us uh, to reduce our uh, cost. So how it will going to benefit for us? No, no. So um, it will benefit us, but maybe the reason that you're given may not be right. See what happens when you big work with very big artists. You end up paying a large amount of money to the artist, but the marketing requirements are lower because the artist is already very well known. When you are working with younger artists, the uh, the artist fee is practically zero, but the marketing fees are very very big because you, the artist needs to get established in the market first. Our strategy of uh, investing in the newer artist is that not only do we want to make money from the songs that the artists are creating. but if the artist becomes big the artist will get invitations to perform in weddings or corporate functions or brand will like him or her to do brand endorsement we will also get a share of that money so unlike a big artist where you make money only from the songs with a younger artist the risk is higher but the money can be made both from the songs as well as from the fee that the artist will be making okay thank you so much sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lokesh Manik from Valan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, Vikram and team. Uh, just one question from my end. Uh, the music revenue this quarter is at 140 crores versus uh, 149 crores June of last year. Uh, hello. Five is not 142 crore. It's 142 crore plus 62 crore, or uh, 16 crore. So it's okay. 148 crore. One fifty. Okay. Music and artist management always have to be seen as music, please. I've been stating this when we were adding this artist management vertical in a separate reporting. I knew this is going to happen. Please, because artist management is nothing but music. Fair enough. So my question was, Vikram, even if you see one fifty seven versus one fifty, uh, and we had a content charge last year at eighteen crores for this uh, for the June quarter last year. Uh, so, uh, if you, are we not seeing the throughput, uh, or you know, there's nothing much to read into this in your? No, there's nothing. Um, my only part, which I said earlier, also when you're comparing okay. 158 versus um, uh, 149 number, also okay. keep in mind this includes Carva revenues on both sides, and Carva actually has seen a decline uh, okay. in this quarter. A reasonable decline in this quarter. Okay. So the music licensing revenue, which is combination of music and artist management on its own as a vertical, is very steady. But I am considering with my guidance of a 26% growth um, during the year. Fair enough. So if I remove Carvan, then this has actually grown because Carvan was there last quarter and it's not there. Yes, this quarter. Right? you will see end of the year a 26% growth. Please. Uh, okay. Even if the quarter news is very good or very bad, ignore it. See us uh-huh. either on a 12 month rolling basis or 12 month future basis. No, I'm, I'm that's I'm comparing 12 months. So I was just comparing it to the content cost that we incurred last year. So just to gauge if you know we're getting the trickle. Uh, but I did not include the car one numbers, uh, so or exclude the car one numbers. Yes. So probably that may be the reason why the discrepancy arises. Great, great, great. That's it from my side. You can thank. You. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pulki Chawla from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Vikram, so my first question related to YouTube. Uh, so, just wanted to understand the impact of uh, realizations on YouTube compared to, let's say, sequentially. Uh, you did highlight uh, there has been some weakness because of diversion of advertising funds. Uh, and related, approximately what proportion of the YouTube views that uh, you typically do report uh, is that on the shorts platform? Uh, so on the uh, reporting side, a large, significant amount of money, uh, views are coming actually from the shorts platform only. Um, since practice right now to start reporting all views, that's why we report earlier days. We never used to report shorts. Fixed fee deal and UGC on YouTube is a variable deal. Um, your question broadly, so maybe I've answered it. Maybe I've not. Tell me, what exactly do you want to know? So just wanted to understand. You mentioned about let's say because your YouTube uh, views have actually gone up this quarter on a sequential basis, but there seems to be some weakness on a on a realization basis. On so realization, 
So on April May combined, um, and that was more of a little qualitative statement. April May combined, we saw more advertising money which was flowing uh, on new stuff because of elections, and then on IPL which happens every year. Um, and every year April May, um, they are not so tight, but April May are tight because most big advertisers want to advertise on IPL and nothing else. Uh, and this is what was expected and I had said this in my uh, last quarter's uh, analyst call also. Uh, and June became completely stable and so we are back to normal rosy days and July has been going very, very steady for us. Got it. Uh, second, on the event side, this quarter you had 11 concerts with LG in the US Canada, but revenue obviously doesn't seem to be that high if you're comparing on a sequential basis. Uh, and you did highlight that you've had a relook at the entire strategy last quarter. So is there, is some, so if you could throw some light on that? So on the event business, uh, can you just be a little bit more specific, uh, Pulkit? What is the exact information? So, so you've exactly, you've done around 11 concerts with Diljit, right? But I think if you look at the revenue, sequ on a sequential basis, there hasn't been too much of an improvement also. Uh, and you did highlight in terms of your, you had a relook at or just at a strategy, right, last quarter. So just wanted to have some color around as to what the, the relook, what the new strategy has been in the event setting. It all depends on, you know, how we are structuring the entire event. Uh, while we, we take care of, you know, the Dalji's the entire event, uh, the revenues that we realize depend on what kind of structuring is being done on the entire event because these are being done overseas and we've got different partners managing different, uh, you know, events in, in, in the shows. So, yes, you will see uh, event revenue. So, the event revenue in US, the way we have treated it right now is very different from the deals that we have in, in India. India, we are managing it 100% in US. We are taking a strategic call to go out there with a local partner. And we people ended up taking right now only our share out of it on the, on the uh, profit side. We didn't want to take a risk of such a large revenue coming on our books. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's helpful. Uh, and my last question is on the artist side. I mean, uh, given that you've reported, let's say, low single-digit margins for the for the couple of quarters that you've reported your numbers, uh, where do you typically see medium-term margins uh, trending towards in this particular segment? Yeah. See, the an artist side, typically the best margins that you can end up doing. Artist, firstly, remember there's no capital that artist management takes. Um, artist management is literally in a way right because all the capital is on music. Um, artist management on its own, apart from having a, a team, there's nothing else that we people are spending there. Uh, typical margins on the music side of artists can vary anything between 20 to 30 to 40 percent, while on the influencer side is between 15 to 20 percent. There's a gross margin. You deduct the expenses of your team members out there. So that's a range you are going to be in unless you have a breakout artist coming out. Remember, this is whatever we make out there is straight is additional money that we are making because there is no cost. Got it. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question is from Dhanayana Deeresh from Y2 Capital Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just for clarity, mm -hmm. the uh, in pocket aces revenue is being partly reflected in artist management as well as in video. Those are the two uh, places where it is getting reflected, right? You're right. So when you say that uh, 16, so you said uh, music is 142 plus 16. So this 16, which you're carving out now in the base quarter, June 23 quarter, how much would have been the artist management? No, no, so artist management today is a combination of what we people are doing with pocket, at in pocket aces, and in pocket aces also there are music influencers and, and acting influencers, as well as the artist management that we are doing within Saregama. So it's a combination that you are sitting and seeing out there. Correct. So the 16, 8, 16 crores this quarter is a combination of your legacy artist management and the pocket aces artist management, right? In the base quarter, June 23, you would not have the pocket aces artist management, but you would have your existing base legacy artist management. So that legacy artist management in the base quarter, if you can give a ballpark number to that extent. No, I, I, let me not get into that much of detailing at this moment. See, again, if, if the objective is to understand that is the music business growing uh, at the pace at which management had given the guidance, I'm holding my um, commitment that we are on track for a 26% year on year increase on the music business, which is a combination of music licensing and artist management. 
but without artist management the music licensing itself also should be in 20% plus right because before no, we had acquired there's no without it is it is the same business for us it's just that ki there were so many questions coming on artist management so we said we start reporting them separately it's the same business at the end of the day those artists are appearing in my music videos so there is and we are taking risk by having the same artist appearing in three of my music videos or singing five of my songs so the revenue i'm going to make from it right now is also a music revenue so we are very clear it is a music driven business okay uh and just i mean i know there is some uh, variability quarterly but compared to the other industry peer why is there so much deviation in the quarter on quarter performance it will be nice right now is i think in a corporate pres- the present quarterly presentation again we have given the quarter numbers for the last i think 12 or 13 quarters and you see this uh, the nature of a beast is this one there is advertising revenue which is uh, highest in quarter 3 typically and we are lot dependent on advertising revenues two of my both on the video side as well as on the music side a large contribution is a percentage of the advertising revenues um which is a, which is seasonal in nature um second overflows nature the way our deals are and we have told you in the past also the way our deals are the minimum guarantee deals uh with potential for overflow uh minimum in the those kind of a deals we book revenues based is only the minimum guarantee value unless the overf- and and overflows come when they actually start hitting us um once you exceed the minimum guarantee and these deals at times are allowed to live for the entire period of 2 years sometimes get renegotiated because of various reasons earlier so the moment we de- renegotiating the deals out here overflows are going to get booked so whenever you're looking at us please look at us on a 12 month basis okay understood thank you for taking my question thank you the next question is from the line of swapni from gm financial please go ahead hi vikram thank you for the opportunity uh, so my first question is with respect to your carva revenue uh, could you give a sense as to what, what was the carva revenue last year same quarter so i'm those see we are started sharing those numbers you are uh, from this quarter onwards you have the numbers for the last full financial year uh it will be easy for you to make an estimate out of that we have seen a decline in this quarter i will acknowledge that uh we have cut down uh, our retail network dramatically and we will keep on cutting it down over the next two quarters by the time we people end this financially it will become only an e-commerce and a modern trade product okay okay no risk uh the second question is uh, with respect to uh, 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 a multi year deal that one of our comp- uh, competitors uh, has signed with a global music label uh, which i think is helping them get better rates from uh, global otts uh, have you thought on those lines uh, you know getting in those kind of deals uh, wherein we uh, we align with some global music uh, label and get I better rates on my competitor uh, let me tell you tell you our strategy um, we as a company i uh, want to be taking this com- uh, as a company are looking for 20 30 years ahead the whole reason of investing in newer content is the same and similarly the the rationale that our fortune should be in our hand whereby we build relationships with each of the individual platforms rather than um, for a guaranteed amount of money hand it over to some other label that means i will have no understanding in future how a spotify is functioning or an instagram is functioning we don't want to be caught in that particular situation please remember every step we are taking in this company is not looking for just the next 12 months we are looking at anything between at least 5 to 10 years ahead and saying in the days where there will be limited number of platforms um, there should be enough competence sitting within saregama that we know how to read data which is coming in a good example today is on a daily basis my team comes to know every of every 150000 song every song every platform if there is more than 5% variance in the daily views or streams compared to the last one month ka average and we take immediate actions on this all this intelligence that we are building on analytics side and on marketing each of the platforms can come only if you have direct relationships so uh, i often joke this that even if somebody is ready to pay a little bit of a premium we let go of that we much rather prefer that we build this competence in house and have direct relationship going on with the platforms fair enough that's very well uh, explained uh, 
the next question is with respect to how much content acquisition are we planning to i think uh, in the uh, cash flow statement you have shown around 47 crores of uh, uh, content being acquired for this particular quarter for the full year uh, where will we stand so on we have given an estimate of 1000 crore for the next three years at a very broad level um, you are looking at number of anything around little upwards of 300 crore okay and uh, and how much cash would uh, would we have on the balance sheet as of today yeah so we already disclosed uh, something in excess of 600 crore which is our cash flow statement in the investor presentation oh got it got it thanks a lot uh, all the best thank you the next question is from the line of mayur patel from 361 amc please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity um just want to confirm one thing uh, music and artist management the segment grew by 6% year on year in this quarter so are we uh, on track to deliver 25% plus for the year we will grow uh, music and uh, um, licensing business of ours which is music plus artist management minus carva minimum 26% growth okay then we will end up achieving those numbers before the year ends Sir Vikram, uh, just one more thing. Uh, can you just? I, uh, my line was not clear. Content acquisition was 27 crores in this quarter, and you are guiding for 300 crores for this year. Is it right? That's a content charge, not acquisition value. Okay. What was the acquisition value for this quarter? Just we don't share the acquisition value every quarter. Uh, like you know, the guidance has been given on the content investment. That's the value of the total. Content that gets released during the quarter, and the thousand crores is a number for three years. Around three hundred crores plus is a number for this year. We will so that we are on track to achieve this three hundred crores uh, content acquisition for this year. For this year, yes, three hundred plus is the target, and we are on course to meet it. Fair enough. I'll come back for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish from InvestQ Investments Advisor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, one bookkeeping question: uh, would, would it be possible for you to share the content cost uh, between amortization and uh, other parts of the P&L that has gone in this quarter? Um, See, the content cost is is in different line items. It's part of the advertising cost as well as the depreciation. but to give a full clarity on the charge we are reporting the entire content cost separately in the investment uh, in the investor uh, presentation uh okay so what was it this quarter total it was 27 crores yeah total 27 crores 27 crores yes uh okay so sir uh, i think our policy is of writing off maybe 38% in the first year so A reverse calculation of this would be a right figure to go for the uh, content um, expenditure that we have booked this quarter. Not really, because the phasing of the content getting released is very important. You know, the marketing gets charged of immediately when you release uh, the content, whereas the uh, acquisition cost will get charged of pro rata based on when the content not gets released. Really. So if you simply divide by 38%, that will not give you the right number. Okay, but this will incrementally keep going up uh, over the uh, quarters now because uh, we have started um, spending on content um, as per the new plan. Uh, for four, uh, four to five quarters, you will see this number going up and then stabilizing. Right, right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Dhanya Pratik Bandari from ART Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Just wanted to understand as to where are we in terms of uh, the revenue uh, for Padani Sa. Have we started generating uh, the revenue for that, the music app? No, so Padani Sa is still right now in a soft launch phase. We are still refining and working on it. That's why there is neither marketing um, happening out there. There is revenue, but that revenue is more of a soft launch part. so the product it will require another month or two before we start promoting the product okay and you also mentioned that uh, for pocket aces you have an intent to grow with a cagr of 25% and by this year end we should be at a break even 
So are we still on the same track? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Akhil Gulecha from PK Day Family Office. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, Mr. Mehra. So hi. you keep saying that we should look at music and artist management as as one vertical, and we will do that going ahead. But we can't look at it this quarter because there was no artist management in quarter one of FY24. So for a like by like comparison, we have to look at the music revenue and. it just feels like the music licensing revenue by itself like excluding artist management which is an inorganic acquisition the music licensing revenue by itself has not really grown this quarter so why is that happening so i'll i've clarified it i'll again repeat all the three things see you will have in the um, when you're doing a, it's not an apple to apple comparison if you don't do artist management combination because artist management not only includes the artists which are part of pocket aces which is the inorganic acquisition artist management also includes the artists which are saregama artists which was part of the uh, revenue in the same quarter last year uh, that's one um, second this music revenue what you are seeing includes karva also which has shown a decent decline during this um, uh, uh, quarter on an year on year basis issue number 2 so both these both are uh, more accounting issues right now than anything else the third part also i have to i said this in my opening statement i'll repeat last year two of the platforms which have now moved from free to pay were still free and we had accounted for the revenue in the quarter those all the platforms in q2 onwards completely moved behind the paywall and the revenues have come down dramatically we saw the impact of that on q2 q3 q4 fy24 and as stated is also been seen in quarter 1 of financial year 25 it's only from q2 onwards that impact will completely go away okay so it's largely because of the shift from uh, free to uh, paid so you think for the next quarter that should go away so music licensing by itself should be on track for 25 for 30% growth from q2 onwards it's not even part of my denominator okay okay Understood. Fair enough. Best of luck. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Divyanshu Mahavar from Dalal and Brocha Stock Broking Private Limited. Please. Ah, uh, thank. Ahead. And thank you for the opportunity, uh, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know a broad, co- a broad industry question that if, say, let all these platforms move move behind a paid wall, so what impact do you see in the piracy? and is there any change in the payback period happens if all this platform moves to a paid pay, pay subscription model okay so let me answer your first one um, if tomorrow we move everything in a the stock one market like bombay delhi and calcutta and chennai of the world if we move everything to pay uh, where the, if and somebody wants to say okay i don't want to listen to paid content neither do i want to go to youtube where will they go uh if you ask a random person today they don't even know where to get pirated music any longer so piracy in the larger towns literally has come to is, is dying uh on the music side smaller towns it's still there but it's a different kind of piracy whereby uh the local um, telecom guy or somebody uh, side loads some pirated music onto your phone that is still existing it's not dead yet uh but on the larger town the piracy has come down so we are reasonably confident that if we people move everybody from a free to a paid side currently you have about 185 to 200 million monthly active users on the free side some of them make just move to youtube some of them may even do side loading our confident belief is that at least 50 million of those people in the first 12 to 18 months itself are going to move towards a paid side Now on the paid side, um, let's understand how does the match work. Our deals with all the paid platforms is like this: whatever money they make from the customer, say they make hundred rupee per month for the sake of simplicity, we will get on an average fifty percent of that money as content pool. That means, if a platform made hundred rupees, fifty bucks, he is going to keep fifty bucks. He will give to the content guys. which will get divided equally across all the songs heard during the month if the person is a heavy listener listens to 100 songs in a month still every song is not going to be worth 50 paisa 
today on an average on the free side we end up making close to 10 paisa and now you may go back and say okay not a 100 rupee customer the 50 rupee customer still we make 25 paisa so yes the realization that all of us as an industry are going to make is going to improve significantly as we move towards a paid side all you need to do is to look at some of the global music labels to understand the impact of paid subscription on the financial health of the music labels and and second question is sir that if uh, are you looking that government is taking a step towards a piracy issue and how do you see this subscription movie going forward in coming years means is it implementing on the ground level up government we uh, at the industry body which is called imi work very closely both with the state and the central government uh, to bring down piracy there is a very strong conviction uh, at the government level to to uh, kill this concept of piracy and get everything on the legitimate side not just on the music but even on the film side if you start just check out the stories that are going coming out in media very often even judiciary is very proactively helping us out as content ip owners to to help us control piracy and put the people who are indulging in it behind bars uh, other part remember the our biggest savior on top of it is technology if i ask you you or your family how do you guys watch or listen to anything even which video chances are it will be an app on your mobile phone or an app on your smart television very few people these days actually consume content through browser in the app world if a, if we people find out which technology allows us to find out that an app is infringing on our content and giving our content without taking license we find it out very fast all we need is to go reach out to google or apple and seek their help to throw that app out and both of them are very uh, proactive and helpful in this space Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Dalaina for Ravi Kumar Naredi from Naredi Investments Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Vikram ji. Haan, Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, operational cost. Do you include content cost, contract manufacturing charges, cost of production of film? this cost a higher side 68 crore in this quarter so what is extraordinary expenditure we have the release of films we have events we have uh, music also which is on the higher side so everything in in revenue uh, which is on the higher side will have the operational cost involved okay and this seg segment revenue added video by 46.53 crore revenue Yes. so what is uh, not able to gain anything material from this video what is this so as i said the video side we are still in the early stages okay. um, we have a, a, to give you comfort once again on the capital allocation policy there is a very strict guideline we all abide by which is not more than 18% of the total capital allocated will ever go towards the films business segment of our films or series to video segment of our within that we people are operating in um we hope that in next 12 to 18 months we will reach a situation whereby we should be able to generate 8 to 10% margins out here and a much higher irr because most of the times when we are working in this space the capital is actually um come from somewhere else and we don't end up putting all the capital as our own capital um that's what the endeavor is on the video side sir and sir now we reach 70 plus film in our database so what is your experience which you want to share with us now sorry sorry films total films in our beauty 70 plus films we are having in our database what is the future strategy uh, as we people go forward right now future strategy remains that we will be investing only in regional cinema um we are not making direct to digital films we make only regional films that can be taken to theater uh the the uh, financial discipline is that 70% of the co of the cost of production should get recovered before the release of the film by licensing uh, the tv and the digital rights of the film 
the music that we end up getting out here right now is a music uh, on which we have far better control and hence we get higher ROI there which is sitting out there on the music side. Um, on the video, on the uh, serial side, we continue with our strategy at Pocket Aces that we will make content uh, only once we have a pre-licensing or a pre-commissioning from any of the bigger digital platforms. Right, right. And sir, uh, lastly, Rocky Ki Rani Ki Prem Kahani, that movie, we are, uh, we, uh, anyone made and we have attached with that uh, movie. Any yes. such uh, future, uh, in future, we repeat the uh, same performance? Uh, just for your information at this juncture, uh, along with Rocky Rani, there was one more movie called Zara Hatke Zara Bachke. Um, Zara me. Hatke Zara Bachke has done even better than Rocky and Rani, uh, in a relative sense because it was a cheaper movie. And a uh, bad news, which is the movie just got released. This is the first time that anybody, apart from there's another movie which was a competitor movie last year. Apart from that, this is the first movie whose song has remained at number one position, both on Spotify and YouTube for 29 days globally. So okay. you are you're not. Uh, um, um, yes, our performance may not be Rocky Rani because it's better than Rocky Rani. We are very proud of Rocky Rani, and bad news is also Dharma only. So you will continue seeing good selection of very big movies, more importantly movies whose music has a lot of potential to go out and survive. Uh, Kalki is another very good example. Kalki has done right. very, very big in theatre, the, the biggest movie of the year and the music was ours and music has also done very well. Right, right, right. And you are doing Vikram ji very hard work. We wish all the best sir. Thank sir. you. Then hard work, our own. I keep on repeating this and I want to say to everyone, listen, uh, we have an option to look at only a short-term profit strategy versus preparing this company for 20, 30 years uh, down the line. Right. We are very clear, while we keep an eye on today's profit, but actually we are preparing this company for tomorrow. Right, that, that, that I agree. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Advant from Prat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I've understood your guidance up to the uh, existed EBITDA uh, level. Uh, we know that on the content charging cost, which was 86 crores in FY24, could you broadly guide us on, uh, you know, based on the acquisition that you plan in this year, what would that content charging cost be in FY25? So the content charge will be pretty high in FI25 because the total amount of content investment we are doing in FI25 is going to be 50% higher than what we did in FI24. So that will straight away have a large enough impact coming on content charge off. Hmm. So at the PBT level, do you expect to grow in FI25? So the growth will be there, but the growth is going to be much lower than the growth which is coming in revenue. Uh, because the charge off is just about going to in the first, I, I said this earlier also, as we are starting this process of doing large investments in content, for the next 18 months or so, that means six quarters or so, you will have the situation whereby the revenue will grow at a steep enough pace. PBT is not going to grow at the same pace, but after that, PBT growth is going to become much faster. And uh, on a three, we are confident that uh, on a three year, between three to three and a half years, we should be able to double the PBT that we wrote in financial year 24. Got it. And sir, so secondly, uh, on the paid versus, uh, you know, free, if you look at uh, Geo and Wink, which are owned by telecom operators, where they bundle their offering, do you think they are ever going to get uh, turn paid? Uh, sir, uh, you said in Geo and Wing case, what? I'm not clear about. Because owned by, uh, I mean, telecom operators, right? right which uh, where they uh, would be bundling their services with other offerings, right? So, I mean, uh, does it make sense for them? Uh, say, unlike a Spotify, like, does it make even sense for them to turn paid, or they they are likely to remain free forever? So, uh, from a customer perspective, because it's bundled with some other service. But, uh, but they are paying, uh, so the question is, are they ready to go back and keep on incurring large losses uh, on this particular app? There may be other things that they can bundle. Content is not cheap. So I am reasonably confident that uh, all these pe concerned people are um, 
smart businessmen also remember when you are streaming a song the amount of data consumption that happens is not very high it's not video it's audio at the end of the day so the benefit they may end up getting to on the data consumption side is there but is limited so i like to believe that um, the the telecom led uh, ott platforms are also going to make move and you are looking at around in 18 months to 24 months maximum all the other the three big platforms also moving behind the paywall um there is already lot more work happening in this space than it used to happen on the earlier a year back and we are seeing that impact coming out there on the subscription revenue the base is very small so the percentage of growth look very very big but for me um wo barish ke baad jab chote chote paudon ke kuch kuch pattiyan dikhni shuru hoti hain it's that stage i'm very confident that we'll have a large subscription tree growing there understood thanks for taking my question and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of govind rajan from csim please go ahead yeah hi hi mr man okay take my question uh, sorry to interrupt you sir i request you to use the handset please we are unable to hear you yeah hi can you hear me now yes yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks thanks for taking my questions um uh, my question i mean this has been asked many times on this call uh, on you know the music segment see we have three sub segments in music uh, the licensing to otts the artist management and karma um, now the artist management is a relatively new one last year you did 20 crores of which 13 crores was in the fourth quarter uh, it's very hard for us to make any sense of how this year is going to be if it suddenly comes into revenue base and we have no idea how what the seasonality of the business is how much of the growth from music you know you've guided 25% uh, growth but would it all come from artist management because the very very different margin profile and i think that's the reason people are asking again and again right that licensing is a very high margin business artist management is mid you know you're seeing single digits karma is probably break even margin profile of the music vertical at a uh, gross margin level is not going to change yeah but i i i i mean we would still it will still be useful if you tell us a how, how music licensing pure music licensing grew in the first quarter and how you expect that to grow in the full year so it will be unfair on my part to start getting into a quarter part on an annual basis it's not just the artist management vertical right artist management vertical always will be a very small subset of the music licensing i can do artist management vertical only in non film music non film music itself is a small vertical on a film music which is lion share of my music business today right now there is no concept of artist management because i can't plug in my own artist there so majority will continue coming out there from the non um, from the uh, pure licensing business alone karva will degrow so on an overall basis the margin profile is not going to change um, here you are looking at between licensing and artist management the combined number growing at 26% year on year so uh, unfortunately beyond that it's just too much of detailing i can't put that out in the market yet you will start seeing right now these numbers panning out i'm also maintaining a guidance of adjusted ebitda at 32 to 33% i'm not changing that at all okay um Uh, one small clarification uh, you did 16 crores of revenues in artist management in the first quarter uh, will the quarterly run rate broadly be similar or is there a lot of seasonality no in artist management there is not that much of seasonality um there is so q3 q4 will be higher uh, but the, the seasonality may because it's not directly only advertising dependent seasonality is far less out here than compared to uh, the hardcore music business where platforms where we get a share of advertising money are completely seasonal in nature okay okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jyoti singh from aryan capital market limited please go ahead thank you for the follow up opportunity this uh, my questions are on the uh, edited uh, song side that now a lot of influencers and brand they are using the song for the promotion uh, on youtube as well as on the meta edited version so how we realize the revenue of that song uh, um, ma'am two things one if a brand is using 
our music to promote any commercial interest of theirs they have to take a separate license over the last 3 uh, to 5 years we have invested a lot in technology which allows us to track that on any of the social media platforms if anybody is using a music or a derivative of that music which means even if you sing in your voice a uh, husn tera tauba tauba of uh, bad news and you put out a system will be able to catch it and we pull down that uh, um, uh, post of the brand immediately and then pursue them legally to go out there and take a license from us Okay, thank you, sir. Is there a uh, last one more question? A lot of blockbuster movie uh, are there in FI twenty five, and also recovery in Hollywood. So uh, we are expecting better year for mm-hmm. Sare Gama. Ma'am, uh, my year, uh, we have never grown a top line by thirty percent year on year. This year, we have already projected a thirty percent growth year on year. So um, we we are we are building it. As I said right now, we will be our revenue is going to grow significantly. uh the, the the profits we are going to make right now we will ensure that we invest those profits in picking up newer and newer successful and popular content so that it's not just one year growth story but it's a multi year growth story thank you sir all the best thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll take this as the last question and i'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments up uh, thank you uh, i'll just reiterate uh, please always look at numbers on a 12 month basis we have started uh, an ambitious journey uh, to start investing in new content in a very aggressive fashion uh, many of you will recollect saregama had not invested and or picked up any new content in the first 18 20 years of this century um, this journey started only 4 5 years ago where we came back into new music um we we want to ensure that today if we are making a lot of profits is because we invested in content in 60s 70s 80s 90s and we repeat that so that when and we are in 2040 or 2050 we are still the number one company secondly subscription in music side is coming subscription on video side is going to become even more prominent as it happened in every other part of the world that's a time that the people who have got the highest quality ip content whether on the audio side or the video side they are the people who are going to benefit a lot we will continue our journey right now of building and growing this company at a astronomical rate while also keeping an eye that um, the profits need to be maintained there will be first 12 to 18 months the profits may not grow at the pace at which top line is growing but post that profits will start growing at the same pace and eventually start exceeding the rate at which revenue is growing thank you and we expect all help and support and your blessings on this thank you thank you on behalf of mk global financial services that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank, thank you, you.